up guys? Johnny and Josh here with Team Legit. Today we got a, another exciting product for you. This is actually something that's uh, just released and we have uh, really enjoyed the bigger brother of it. But uh, they just released a smaller version. We've been testing it out and using it and it meets up to the uh, qualifications and the specs of the larger brother. You want to tell them what it is? This is the new PZO420 Mini. We both, we both, actually everybody on the team loves the PZO420. Um, there is a significant difference between the PZO420 and other clones out there. You have to make sure you get the actual PZO420. Some other manufacturers brand it as a CM113, I believe. Uh -huh. Just to show you a couple differences between the uh, new PZO and the older PZO or the larger PZO, um, the programming cable has now changed. Uh, they got this little two plug uh, positive minus a uh, little control board here and it's got a little toggle up down and then the center button is now the enter button yeah because if you guys remember on any of the original stuff it came with um one of yeah we actually have one laying around don't we yeah okay so this is um this is one of the original boards and not only were these really clunky and kind of you know not user friendly to use um sometimes the buttons weren't wired properly <laughs> so you'd be like pressing sideways and it's going up and it was all over the place so they're okay, but bleh, just just forget those. We got so, a whole entire drawer, drawer of full those, of these. Yeah. So, and then they went to this same joystick style one, which these are awesome. I love these little guys. But problem is, is they had a bunch of plugs on them, and I remember on my legit wing, I crashed it because I do that a lot, and I destroyed. <laughs> um, there's like this used to be like a five or six pin connector on the back side of the um, of the control board. So the newest rendition of these, because it is the mini. Um, it just has these two prongs which go into here and all that there is to it. Yeah, see that's the original one. That's that a has, different cable. Yeah, yep. that's the original cable. And now um, all you have to do on these guys, it just pops in. Um, really easy to program. They work well. You don't uh, have to have this in the camera, guys. Once you finish your settings and whatnot, just pull it yeah, out. Pull it out. You're good to go. Um, I usually, as soon as I buy my cameras, even if I'm not sure what I'm going to put them in yet, just program them right away. It only takes a minute. And then as soon as you put it in something, you don't get out to the field and realize that it's not working right. So Usually I like to just go in there, turn, go into the exposure setting, and then turn on the WDR and then leave everything else. Uh, some of the other guys, maybe you guys might want to get into more tuning or whatnot, but um, I just do the WDR setting. That pretty much works for me. The other uh, little cable that's included in the package is this cable. This is meant for a security system for your house. As you guys know, in FPV, these cameras are basically CCD cameras, so they're not meant to be doing what we do, but we can hack them up and use them for what we need, them, uh, need to use them for. Right. Uh, this will take just a standard bullet connector and go out to your RCA. Right, and then when you're also testing out, if you want to check um, angles on your planes, um, these, these are quantum FPV goggles, which are actually not pretty bad good goggles, for 30 yeah. bucks actually. Yeah. <laughs> I have a couple friends that actually fly with these and they're pretty good actually. I was impressed. <laughs> but um, this is really good if you want to be testing on the bench because you can hook up you know, a simple power setup like this. You can see we were doing this with Mobius earlier. Yeah. But um, all you have to do is hook this up into here. You can wire up your power into it um, and uh, you'll, have, you'll be all set to go for um, extra This power will give you like a live view so you don't have power on your video transmitter, power your on ground station, else. whatever. Yeah, exactly. So it'll let you get in real quick and do what you need to do. Exactly. And then lastly, they give you this really, really cool uh, new cable. And the reason I say cool is because this is actually geared for FPV. This is the standard plug that goes back here, uh, the three position, the three wire plug with your positive, again, five to, five, five to 16 volts, your ground, and your uh, video feed here. And then a lot of the mini quad guys, especially, um, I know Daniel from X Hover, he loves running the 4S, 4S quadcopters with big six inch props because they're ridiculous and they're fun to fly. So that's why it's nice to have these because you can wire it straight into your power system and you don't have to have an extra back, extra weight. That's what this whole camera has been designed around is shaving weight and saving money. But the other great thing is, yes, guys run 4S and whatnot. Then there's some guys that run two cell setups or maybe a three cell setup, um, but you're getting some noise from your ESCs. Well, a lot of you guys run these immersion 600 milliwatt video transmitters. They also have the 250 line. They also have these now in the 2.4 gigahertz, but they're all basically the same platform, uh, just different uh, power outputs and frequencies. So uh, Josh is going to show you real quick how this would plug in if you were going to run it off of something else. Right. So with these guys, um, a lot back in the day, these used to come with all kinds of different, um, different kind of plugs and whatnot on them. So I remember on which rendition was it? I think it's the PZO 428, which is the last version of it, which is the plastic cased one. They came with just a bare plug that you could customize with these. Now it's become even more user friendly than that. This is a ready-made RC camera. So yep. 
This is um, this comes really super customizable because I know that the boss cam polarity and stuff on it. Yeah, this one doesn't have the tape or the shrink tubing on it, but all the polarities and everything totally different. I have toasted cameras like that, so make sure if you're switching from FPV transmitters, tech tip: always check polarity before you plug anything in power anything up. So this guy is really easy to use. Um, just this is all um, um, how it works. Yeah, wrong one. Okay. Yep. Um, so this is all. Let's see. That's why you gotta double check. Josh um, somehow breaks everything. They call me, yeah, they call me the wrecker. Yeah, if you ever watch Top Gear, they call a guy Adam Farrar the wrecker. Uh-uh, I'm the FPV wrecker. All this stuff, um, it's really easy to plug in. So you're going to have your 5 volt and ground on the outside here, which are switched on the boss cam, just FYI. Um, so all you're going to do is take this guy, plug it right into these pins on the back side of the transmitter. And then this is your video feed, which you're going to, the same is different on the boss cam transmitter. So always check everything. Um, and then just plug this guy right into your ground thing. Actually, I think on the boss cam it's in the middle, but the, again, yeah. the polarity is reversed. Yeah, the polarity is reversed, and I, like I said, I have toasted cameras like that, so be careful. And another thing to note, too, is the difference between the immersion and the boss cam. This puts out 12 volts to your camera, this puts out 5 volts. So right. if you're running the 12-volt uh, camera, awesome. If you're running the 5-volt uh, camera, not so awesome. Another way I have destroyed a camera. <laughs> yeah, so we yes. should do an episode about just how many just different ways you've destroyed cameras. <laughs> Okay, so these, yeah, so that's the other nice thing about these new um, PZOs is because I remember when I switched and built my mini quad and I switched over from boss camp to immersion. When you switch to immersion, because it's a different voltage, I had to run a back and a bunch of other stuff that goes along with it. These guys, like I said, shaving weight, saving money. All you have to do is just plug this guy right in. Doesn't matter which transmitter you're plugging it into, and you'll get clean power out of this versus wiring it into your power system, which I did. And then sometimes you'd get interference and stuff like that. So power surges, you don't have to worry about that because it's all being filtered through your transmitter. Uh, they're solid cameras, especially with, originally they came with either a steel or a plastic case. They're really tough, the steel one's pretty heavy, and as you can see, like this guy on this mini quad, it's just really big for being on a mini quad. I mean, that takes up the whole front area, it's supposed to be, you know, form factor of a GoPro. So, um, then, this is the same camera without, um, without any case on it, and there's actually edges that come along the outside of it that you can clip off, and this is the PZO420H. So we clip them off so we don't right. have that one to show you guys. Exactly. But, but you can see the rough edges here where the uh, previous edges used to go. Right. And that helps cut down on weight and it also cuts down on size. These are great. This is what we run on all the legit wings. I think. Every single I, one that I we I can't have. think of any plane that we don't use these on. Yep. Um, the great cameras. But since that we've been flying the mini quads, you can see that these are designed for that. But even still, when you're you know flying with all that up front, it can... You know, it's just a lot of form factor that you would, you know, like to not have. And it just barely fits in these EMR frames. So, in comes PZO420. The new PZO420. This is, I believe, the model is uh, PZO420... M. PZO420M for micro. And then this is the L28 model, which is the 2.8 millimeter uh, lens. And as you guys can see, this thing fits in here really nice and tight. It actually, or nice and... Uh, uh, compact. It's actually a really good fit. So this camera opens up a lot more different uh, options for you guys when running different setups. The only thing we're waiting for now is some nice plastic cases for them. I know. That should come soon, but I'm sure there's somebody out there who's already 3D printing them or something like that. Yeah. So. And uh, speaking about these cameras and the Immersion VTX, we actually have a new product that will be coming out. We're in the process of developing now. Um, I can give you guys a quick sneak peek. Um, when I, when I get some pictures of it, it's actually going to be a prototype. But just imagine one package is going to look something similar to this. It's going to help you guys out for those guys that uh, maybe are on budget minded or um, they don't have the uh, capabilities of purchasing more than one FPV system for your mini quad. So say, or your aircraft, your plane, your car, whatever you got. So you basically have a little pod that's going to be able to go on any vehicle and it'll basically be a good, nice, clean setup. Something similar to this. So look out for that in the future. Anything else we got for these guys? I think we're good to go. All right, guys. So these are now available on the store. Uh, so you guys can check them out. I'll put the links in the description below. For this and other really cool uh, products, don't forget to check out our website. Again, that'll be in the description below. If you guys like seeing these videos, don't forget to... Subscribe and like. Exactly. I'm Johnny. I'm Josh. Thanks for watching. We'll be showing you guys uh, some of the FPV transmitters that we typically use. Um, our personal favorite for the show, or for the show, for the team, is uh, the 5.8 gigahertz um, 600, 600 milliwatt. milliwatt immersion RC transmitters. These are the workhorse of Team Legit, and they're pretty much the workhorse of everywhere else and everywhere. Everybody uses these things. They're great.
Um, they're pretty good all around. Yeah, they're really good. Um, they're easy to choose channels because they're actually correct. Because the boss cam ones, it's just kind of a crab shoot. You just kind of flip stuff until you find a channel that works and your buddies aren't flying. Boss cam, on. what's that? <sighs> boss cam is another. Is a I guess manufacturer. I wouldn't say knockoff. It's just another yeah. manufacturer.